Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Ron Oak Jr. with Prayer House Assembly of God, also working with Pray Tell Ministries. I want to introduce Eklid Mugisho. Yes. He is in the Congo. He is ordained through Pray Tell Ministries. And uh, I asked him to uh, tell us how his ministry is going and what he's doing. And at the end, there's going to be a video with a link for support. But Pastor Eklid, tell us about what you're doing. Uh, I'm a pastor. I've been pastoring for um, 15 years. 15 years. Congo. Congo is in the middle of Central Africa. We have a ministry, we have a church, we work as a community. We have school, then we do education. The education, we have more than 350 kids. 350 kids? 350 kids. They are vulnerable, uh, they are orphans, and uh, from really completely destroyed families yeah. because of war in the country has been for more than 20 years. Then we have these kids, we teach them not only knowledge, but also we teach them God's word. When they go back to their houses, they speak about the Jesus, they met at school, and they share with their families. And we have seen many of their parents coming to Christ, mm -hmm. and they are now in our church. That's awesome. But also we do, we teach ladies how they can sustain their lives by teaching them how to sew. We do it for one year, and uh, after one year, they, we give them a they machine. Get, they, yeah, they get a machine. A machine, a sewing machine, so they can To do their own business. Their, and their own business, that's help great. their children and their families. That's great. Uh, but so uh, how do the kids learn about Jesus? Uh, the kids, when we are at school, we teach them. The teachers, we have teachers who teach them, not only science, but they teach them also. We have some hours where we teach the Bible. We really teach them Bibles. Every Monday we have a time for 15 minutes to 20, we teach them Bibles. And whenever we have someone who visits as a missionary, we give them time where they can speak to kids and pray for them. And we have seen them changing with their lives. So how is uh, becoming, when you became ordained with Pray Tell Ministries, how has that helped your ministry out? Uh, when I was uh, ordained, before, you know, I'm going all around USA, I've been in Europe, in Africa also, preaching. Some, they ask you, where you, where do you come from? Yeah. Where do you, where did you do your school? Things like that. There are so many questions. Uh, I know I did my high school theology and other things, but whenever you go everywhere from your country to other countries, they ask you so many questions. But from I get to my ordinations, certificate, uh, whenever I, saw, I, 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 I show it you to show people, they, oh, they, we know, we, we understand. So it gives credibility. It gives me credibility. Yeah. Wherever I go, to people I speak to, they say, okay, you are free. Yeah. You can speak wherever you, you go. Yeah. It really has helped me, and uh, it's just me in my country, and I'm not the only one who speak. Yeah. But I would like if we reach too many pastors, not just me, but we need more people. And uh, really, Congo, as I said, we have been in war for many years, yeah. and we feel we would like to be linked with other people. As we train pastors, we can give them a, a word of God. It's just feed by the Holy Spirit, but don't have the, some don't have So your goal, friends. you're trying to make more yes. disciples yeah, yeah, yeah. and build people up in the faith and, and create more ministers yes. themselves to go and, and to share this word. Yeah. yeah, We are so pleased to be able to offer the ordination uh, to get the word of God out to people who need to hear. Yeah. Not, not just uh, those who take it or leave it, but there are people who are dying without Christ. Yeah. And it is it is our absolute privilege to be able to team up with him to get this message of hope out to a lost and dying generation. Yes. And so we are so thankful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you and praise the Lord Come for the Virginia. work that he's doing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Bless you. <laughs> but at the end here we're going to have a video of his ministry and a link to his support and you can find out more about what Pastor Euclid is doing. But we praise God and we say thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. Amen. Amen. The world may not need another organization. 
It may not need another enterprise or another association, but it does need people who live with genuine love, intentionality, and community. People want to belong to something, and they need to belong somewhere. We are a family. St. Teresa said this, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. The New Hope Community, together with Rally International, is a church in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We believe deeply in returning value and dignity back to those who are most marginalized in society. We do this through education, social business, and leadership development. We transform our community through small acts of love. Over the years, we have seen Christ through each other's eyes. We have seen him when we wept together. We've seen him when we've laughed together. We've seen him in our weaknesses and also in our vulnerabilities. We have seen him in our courage to love and pursue unity together. The fruit of this love is what you see today. Two thriving churches, a primary school, a feeding program that offers a warm and nutritious meal to hundreds of students per week, art and sports therapy programs, which give children the opportunity to recreate their brain through basic recreational activities, which are not available to the poor in this region, social businesses that give women the opportunity to be financially independent and for families to be financially free, and the development of strong leaders for the next generation. The Bible says that there are many teachers in our lives, but there are few fathers. Pastor Euclid is a father to our community. He and his wife, Lillian, founded the church in 2007. They started the church within the inner city of Goma with just a few dollars in their pocket. This area, most often referred to as Birere, has suffered sweeping fires, regular nighttime shootouts, and has even been overtaken by rebels in 2013. Pastor Euclid started by gathering children in the community to sing, dance, and play games. Afterwards, he would pray with them and teach them from the Bible. As those children's lives changed, it touched their families. Today, those children and youth are leaders in the church. Some of their mothers and fathers are now also leading the ministry. The children's ministry continues in Birere, and we are able to provide scholarships for more than 100 children in the community, including university scholarships to some of the same students that Pastor Euclid taught when they were children. The community was later able to buy land in an area called Magunga. It was a place outside of the city, a place that is known for internally displaced people. These were refugees within their own country who had fled from nearby villages. Families suffered from lack of clean water, sanitation, and health in their homes, leading to the deaths of many children in our church when it was first started. This need, along with the vast amount of unschooled children, led us to start a school in the community. The Congolese government does not offer free education to its children, and families often struggle to eat, let alone send all of their children to school. The School of Hope provides free education to its students. Our first year, we started with three classrooms. Our goal is to keep building at least one more classroom per year. We would like to see these children all get their high school diplomas, and we want our school to grow with them as they get there. Our hope is that these students can be the future of our community, fully understanding their identities in Christ, and also understanding that they do have a purpose in this world, while also having the knowledge, skill sets, and abilities to walk it out. Transformation is more than spiritual. It's economical too. Martin Luther King Jr. said, that a religion that professes to be concerned with the souls of man, but is not concerned about the slums that damn them, the economic conditions that strangle them, and the social conditions that cripple them, is a dead religion. The Esther Project is a social business that teaches mothers how to work with their hands and make a living. 
Our church tries to create jobs for fathers and mothers who want to provide for their children, but are victims of a collapsed economy. This is why we work to build workshops to train and help generate income to hardworking people. Our community continues to reach out to some of the hardest areas in the region where families are often victims of war and political instability. Mokuo is one of those places. It's a village primarily made of pygmies, also filled with many people who were former child soldiers and war veterans. Our goal is to also create a center for the community here too, with a church to father and mother the orphaned hearts, a school to give new opportunities to children and youth, and the Esther Project to advance families economically. We want to train leaders, we want to build the next generation, and see a new hope for Congo. Hope is usually something people think of as abstract, something you can't see or touch, but we know hope. This is hope. <laughs>